All right, guys, welcome back. Today, I want to take a look at how we can make responsive slash dynamic keybinds uh, inside of Roblox Studio. So basically, here you can see I have this command UI, which we made from a previous video. So if you want, you can go ahead and check it out. But essentially, let me show you guys exactly what I mean. So right here, uh, you can see we have some keybind indicators, labels, or uh, buttons right here. Okay. These are made entirely with frames uh, As you can see and for example reset board we have escape right here And so let's see what happens if we were uh, to modify and change the text so from escape Let's say uh, we could go for a control alt delete like so and you can see this whole thing uh, respawns to the uh, change as well as up here we have workspace right we could go for something like personal workspace and you can see this thing as well resizes so this is basically what responsive design uh, entails okay so here inside of Photoshop let me show you guys what uh, unresponsive design looks like so control s if we change the text to just say s right you can see nothing happens so if you had multiple buttons i don't know three right how tedious would it be if you had to uh, completely modify each one like this every single time right here boom right we go for like a, a square value for s and then we align by the right side whereas right here I could go for S and there you go. It resizes immediately. So uh, right here, you can see we have a tab uh, on this command UI. And so basically, if I copy, you can see this UI responds accordingly. And uh, right here, this recent tab, if I copy, you can see now we have this right here. I can copy and you can see how uh, efficient this really is. So how about we take a look and uh, let me show you guys an example on how we could construct and build our own uh, responsive keybind UI. I have spent hundreds of hours making these videos and also designing products for you guys. If you are a creator who is serious about their dreams and goals, in creating game projects or if you are a creative and a designer as well who is looking to make a career out of designing then you will appreciate these design resources i have created if you're building an anime inspired game well we have interface kits just for that if you want a free sample you can get the preview bundle completely for free so if you are serious then check it out with the link below or gfxcomment.com if you are not serious these are not for you and you can ignore this message all right i hope you guys enjoy this video so we're gonna start with a basic uh screen uh gui right here uh just to keep this organized i'm just going to call this keybind i'm gonna go for a frame let's go for a canvas and then uh anchor point 0.5 0.5 like so, position 0.5 and also 0.5, size 1, 0 for X as well as Y, 1, 0. We go for a nice background color. Okay, now if you see right here, we actually, uh, this keybind, if I can, if I go in here. Uh, template right uh, there are actually three layers so we have shadow bevel and main and all these also use this layout as well to control the position so I'm gonna show you guys how to utilize that so uh, let's go ahead okay here we have canvas we're gonna go for we're gonna start our keybind Okay, so inside a frame, I'm going to add a new frame. I'm going to bring up my UI tools just so we have a faster uh, process here. Let me 
set this up. Okay, so anchor. So basically, let's go ahead and do a very simple tab. I'm gonna call this tab, just so we are not uh, just floating on the canvas. So let's go ahead, go for a simple color. Let's go for a UI corner and uh, change the values like points. Two is fine. Okay, inside of tab, we're going to start our keybind. So let's go for a frame. I'm going to go for anchor to begin. Uh, let's create a basic size for our keybind. I'm going to go for a larger one uh, so it is more uh, visible for you guys watching. Let's go for anchor. In here, let's call this template. As you can see, now we're going to add a new frame inside of the template. We're going to call this our shadow. Okay, let's go for anchor, which means change the anchor point to 0 0.5, 0 0.5, as well as the position to 0 0.5, 0 0.5. We're going to go fit parent, which is size 1, 0, and 1, 0, as you can see. Uh, let's go ahead and add a corner to shadow. Let me go for something simple like 0.1. We're going to change the color so you can see it. So shadow, I'm going to go a bit darker, as you can see. And for template, we're going to go background off. So background transparency, one. Now for both of these, you can see the size is 185 by 59, correct? We're going to go ahead and select both. And we're going to go to size constraint. And we're going to go for Y, Y, as you can see. And now we're going to go to automatic size, X, like so. And if you recall, the uh, size for shadow is 185 by 59. So we're going to go for size. We increase 2.5, 3, 3.25, nope, 3.2, close, 3.18. Uh, now for tablets, so 185 by 59. Uh, Let's go ahead and let's go scale and then fix the value here. One. Alright, so we have both with the same size and they are both using autom automatic size X, as you can see. So now basically, I'm going to add a list layout to template and this is fine. We're going to copy our shadow and we're going to go paste. Uh, we'll right click and go paste into like so this will become our bevel now for bevel I'm going to uh, let's go for anchor point y0 let's make the color brighter like so and then we're going to go for this layout inside of shadow and we're going to go for Make sure vertical is at top and for bevel, we're going to reduce the Y value for size to something like 0.9, right? For example, as you can see, we're like 0.925, I guess. Okay, nice. And next, we're going to copy again and paste into. This will become our main, which we're going to add. Let's go for anchor point uh, Y1 change the color and then we're going to add a list layout and make sure uh, vertical is at bottom like so we're going to fix the uh, x value here three four three five three six three seven so now we can add a text label take the background off we go for some basic styles and uh, we can increase the text size we're going to use a fixed text size because we are going to also use um, size yy and also auto size x like so now basically i'm going to go for scale but i'm not using text scale 
right here. And here I'm going to change the X to zero as well as right here, zero, like so. And here, zero, as well as shadow X, zero. So let's go for template X, uh, zero right here. And you can see it, um, it's kind of resizing uh, according to the text. However, if we actually go for like S for example, you can see it becomes too small. Okay, so here inside of text, we're gonna add some UI padding. And you guys will see on the right side, we go for like offset 15 for example, as well as the left side. And now you can see we have a much nicer looking button. And I think we can increase the corner size so i'm gonna go for like 0.2 for example and perhaps for the uh i'm gonna say the main i'm going to increase the size very slightly so like 0.945 and you can see we have a decent uh looking button let's go ahead and test this out if we uh let me make this let me have this show better if we change to control S, you can see now it respawns like so. Uh, if we go back to, let's say, if we go to, let's say W, you can see we have a nice uh, button. It is not perfectly square, right? Even with just one letter. So to fix this, uh, let's go ahead and increase some padding, 16. Okay, it's closer. <laughs> 18 on both sides. That is close enough. So W, we could go for you know, Control V. And now you can see we have a functioning responsive keybind inside of tab. We can add a list layout as well. We could go for uh, vertical center and also horizontal. Align right side and then inside of tab we can add some padding. Let's go for right side 0 0.05 0 0.03 and we could also if you guys want to stylize this thing further we can add a gradient like so. Let's go for rotation uh, negative 90. We could go for a nice little gradient right here just like so i'm going to change the bevel color let's go for a brighter shade not enough like this right and then we can also finish with a stroke on the shadow let's go for four or three Go for the same color here and let's go ahead test this out uh f for example and here you guys go um we have an awesome responsive keybind gfxcomment.com check it out for design assets yeah i hope you guys enjoyed and as it says check out gfxcomment.com if you guys want design assets for your game projects I hope this video has helped you guys. Also, happy New Year's. A lot more is coming for us this year. So stay tuned and I will catch you guys next time.